All right, here we go again. Uh, today on the agenda, we've got the advanced chest and shoulder training. I led off with uh, incline barbell bench on this particular day. Uh, noticing as always, nice slow controlled negative, uh, about a four count negative on these. Big thing with the negatives guys here, I had someone ask about the timing of it because they're you know, concerned with the fact that it's not four seconds. Four seconds is a long fucking time. We're talking about a four count. It's just counting backwards. The key here more than anything is the consistency to make sure that the next time I go to match these numbers, I'm actually beating the same logs. I'm, I'm going the same speed. It doesn't count if all of a sudden I get more reps because I'm doing a two count negative. I'm dropping the negative. So that's the real thing to be focused on here. Don't be overly obsessed with how much time it takes, but that the time is consistent. Nice controlled, making sure that they we're actually getting the negative, fighting it. You'll also notice I don't go all the way down on the chest. Key is, is look how open my chest is at the bottom of these. That is completely stretched. Anything beyond that comes into the front delts, everything else. Not the point of this operation. So, four count negative, three attempts with these. Very, very key. And you'll notice I always finish on the negative. So when you watch, I'm actually going to get my own last rep. Then I say the negative, we go slow, and my partner steals the weight from me and puts it back up. So three attempts there, then we move on to the static press, which you're looking at right now. We bring it down about a quarter of the way, and I just fight it for as long as I can hold. As soon as I'm gonna actually fail, my partner takes the weight, we're done, and we move on to the next movement. So that is my one monster movement, my one primary focus was just the incline barbell press on this day. Up next was uh, supposed to be pec deck, but the damn thing was broken at my gym. So instead, I ended up utilizing the uh, flat dumbbell press to do my fly movement that I always do. Same as the pec deck, I did a two count stretch at the bottom, two count contraction at the top. Just going for maximum reps here, full stretch. One set, that's all we did here. One set straight through. I think I got about 20 reps here. Um, and then I would typically be moving up and wait the next time, trying to eventually get that number of reps to come down as the weight continues to go up. I don't really recommend doing this on a flat uh, as much as I do on a pec deck because it's not a constant tension thing. Gravity straight up and down and obviously the arc that I'm moving on a fly is not. So a lot better constant tension when using the pec deck versus this. But when you're at a dumpy gym like mine that breaks stuff and leaves it down for three, four or five days, this is just kind of the way it works. So did these, got a good pump. Uh, obviously still worked out, but I definitely recommend you guys stick with a pec deck over something like this when you're trying to use them as a uh, finishing movement for all your pec movements. As always, we finish off the movement by going to the stretch. I prefer these to be done on the flat bench. So all I'm gonna do, press it straight up. Then I take a nice wide stretch and just sit there and hold it as long as I can. One thing I want you to think about when you're doing your stretching is your body naturally, when it starts to fight, will be to either press the weight up or to let your chest cave down. So when you feel that thought in your mind that you wanna press or resist, let the stretch go even further, breathe into it, and really force that chest up. Now, this is one of those times I wish I didn't wear such baggy ass shirts because one thing I want you to see is that chest is really up. I've arched my back like crazy. You could probably fit your whole arm underneath my low back here. All I'm trying to do is enhance that stretch, hold it as long as possible. One question I get is do we try to actually manage and increase the weight or time on the stretch? Yes and no. I don't really obsess about the weight, but I definitely want to be holding it as long as I can and, and stress myself, but keeping in mind also to pay attention to how you feel because this is a stretch. It's supposed to push you. You're supposed to be giving your muscle room to grow, um, breaking out that fascia a little bit, but you don't want to be injured, so you do have to be careful with these. One attempt with those, as long as you can, and then we move on to shoulders. So my meat and potatoes movement for shoulders on this day was a hammer strength shoulder press. What I'm looking for here, again, is a four count negative on these. Uh, nice controlled on the way down. I do hit the bottom, even bounce up a little off of that. Um, not the end of the world. If you prefer a full pause at the bottom, you can do that as well. Key here is being consistent with it. One thing you'll also notice in this that you probably just saw is 
when I get beat up and tired, my left shoulder due to a shoulder surgery actually gives out first. So I found the best way for me to manage that is to fire up the right side that has the strength in it and then focus on my left. So although it's awkward as hell and my stretch therapist does not love seeing it, this is how I make sure to get maximum reps. So as you watch right here, I'm going to push the right side up, then fight with the left. It just allows me to really put all of my focus into that weaker side once I throw the other side up. Downside being when you see how easy it is to throw my right side up, I wish they were both that way so I could just keep going. So again, the rest pause here. We got three separate attempts with the same weight, 15 full breaths between the two, and then finally finishing off with a static. So really, really simple process. Same thing we do with all the meat and potato movements. Get those three out of the way, get the static, and that's it. So you do not have a chance to really screw up or waste any reps when you're doing these. I can't drive that home enough for these videos, guys, is when you're training this low volume, the key above anything else is maximizing intensity on each attempt. If you don't do that, it's just not enough volume. And if it's not enough volume, you're not gonna grow. So as much as I believe in the low volume training, as much as I believe in progressive overload, if you don't have it in you mentally to push to, to hell and back, this won't be enough for you. So keep that in mind. You have nothing to save it for. The final movement that I have my guys do and I do for shoulders is the trifecta. This is a shoulder movement that I do all the time uh, at the end of every single shoulder workout, no matter what the compound movement was. So what you're seeing here is 10 reps with a four count negative. Those are nice controlled all the way through, full range of motion, nice and slow fighting it. Then immediately going right into a 20 rep partial. So you notice I'm really only going about halfway up, holding the top for a quick two count. It's literally like one, one, down, one, two, down. So just enough for a good hard squeeze. We get 20 of those. Then I'll typically, as you'll see in the video, take a quick breather, three seconds maybe, just get my body out of there because I barely fit in this damn machine. And then I go on to my static hold. So with the static hold, it's attempt is to get out to the side the same distance that you do on your partials of 20 reps, but just holding it there. So literally, as you'll see right now, all I'm gonna do is bring it out and I just hold. Training partner counts the time for me and I hold it for as long as I can. Really trying to focus on keeping it out of my traps, keeping all the focus in the delts and just fighting. So again, the set is 10 full range with a four count, 20 partials with a two count of the pause, and then finally at least 30 seconds is the goal for the static hold. Pushing beyond that if you can, as you beat your numbers or, or make all those numbers, you move up and wait. Just keep doing that until you can't. These are brutal, man. You will absolutely love to hate them, and uh, they will smoke you completely. Just make sure you set up the seat right so you're not overusing the traps, keeping it all in the delts, and you'll love them. So... This last movement is not something I would have you guys doing. Um, I actually got a little bit of an imbalance with my pec. Uh, it gets really tight, so the key with that is, is making sure that on these days I stretch the chest and I go to the opposite side, open up the rhomboids, the rear delts, the traps. So all I'm doing here is I did two quick sets, high reps of an incline rear lateral raise with dumbbells. Again, not something I'd suggest, but I figured since I'm doing these videos, I want to keep it true, keep it like a fly on the wall of my workout, and these are what I'm doing currently. But again, unless you've got an imbalance, there's really no reason. With all the pulling I'm doing with the deads, the rack deads, the T-bar rows, the pull-ups, I don't feel the rear delts need too much extra attention on their own. Um, if they're lacking for you, go ahead and do it. But for me, the key really is, is it was all about the imbalance more than anything, and that uh, really seemed to help with that. So the last thing for shoulders here is an extreme stretch. I really prefer these over the dual arm that you're doing off of the uh, barbell uh, that you actually saw on uh, bicep day. Difference with these would have been, I'd grab that on a regular traditional grip versus uh, underhand. I prefer these because I'm able to get into them and the only thing I have to focus on is uh, the stretch. So each side gets hit. Um, as you can see, contorted myself in a way to get my hand behind my back, which is hard to do without anything. The bar actually helps me get it up there. And I just hold it there, trying to focus very much on keeping my chest high. And then uh, sometimes if I need to really enhance that stretch, when I'm on the right side, like I'm currently, I would look off to my left to really stretch that front delt a little bit more, get a little deeper stretch. On this particular day, I was pretty tight. I didn't need any more than that. And uh, if you're more flexible than I am, if you work your hand up 
that uh, barbell you're looking at right there, you can get it all the way to the top where it's almost like you'd be touching your own rear delt with your hand. Um, those are awesome. So do those with both sides and you're set. Everything for the day.